today is Tuesday, May 19th, 2020, <coughs> the beginning of the seventh, 37th year of my wonderful life with my wife, Lisa. Oh. And um, hopefully we have another 99. But anyway. All right. So today we're doing Psalm 68, verse 1 through 10, and 32 to 35. And um, interesting in my studies um, on, on Psalm 68, um, I kept re reading about lots of issues in trying to interpret this psalm, I guess, between all the smart people in the world. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't see the problem. But anyway, <clears throat> Pastor Hill will, uh, will enlighten us um, oh. as we go along here on some of the history here mm. that I may miss. Yeah. Okay, so who would like to read this psalm? I can do it. Go ahead, fire away. I've got the NIV issue here online, so it might be a little different than what Erica has, but let it go. Happy. Okay. May God arise, may his enemies be scattered, may his foes flee before him, may you blow them away like smoke, as wax melts before the fire. May the wicked perish before God, but may the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. May they be happy and joyful. Sing to the God, sing to God, sing in praise of his name. Extol him who rides on the clouds. Rejoice before him. His name is the Lord, a father to the fatherless, a defender of the widows. In God in his holy dwelling, God sets the lonely in families. He leads out the prisoners with singing, but the rebellious live in a sun-scorched land. When you, God, went out before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth shook, the heavens poured down rain. Before God, the one Sinai, before God, the God of Israel, you gave abundant showers, O God. You refreshed your weary inheritance. Your people settled in it, and from your bounty, God, you provided for the poor. Praise be to God. Did I get that right? Did I read the right one? Oh, I'm sorry. Thir and then 32 to 35. <clears throat> oh, okay, sorry. Sing to God your kingdom of the your kingdoms of the earth. <clears throat> Sing praise to the Lord, to Him who rides across the highest heavens, the ancient heavens, who thunders with mighty voice. Proclaim the power of God, whose majesty is over Israel, whose power is in the heavens. Your God. You, God, are awesome in your sanctuary. The God of Israel gives power and strength to his people. Praise be to God. Amen. So just as a brief overview, um, there is four sections of this reading um, that they've kind of had this organized in. Uh, first of all, it's, before I get into that, it's the fourth Psalm of four that voices the message that God reigns, that God is the king of Israel. And like I said before, the origin and use, use of this psalm is in dispute, but a couple of theories that are out there that in one way, it's a victory hymn that celebrates God's glorious triumphant rule of Israel. Mm. That's all, and we hear that, you know, we hear that, and we'll get into that in a second, but then it also could be considered a communal song of thanksgiving, especially those last few verses that, that Erica read, really talks a lot about thanksgiving and rejoicing, and it also celebrates God's reign from Jerusalem, um, as the people of Israel wandered through the wilderness, God led them to the promised land where God now resides in Jerusalem as, as Israel's king. There's also a little history in here with references to the Ark of the Covenant, which housed the, supposedly housed the tablets of uh, the Ten Commandments. I was going to put a picture up of the uh, church that supposedly has the Ark of the Covenant. But, um, that might not be the actual place or what they think is the actual place. So I didn't, I didn't go 
pull that up for you. So a lot of different things, how this ways of this psalm could be considered. Um, I'll break up in, the, in those four sections here. The, the first three verses acts as an introduction. And it's also considered a processional, okay? Because again, being a psalm, it's, it's a prayer, it's a hymn. Mm -hmm. And it was sung um, in worship. So I could almost imagine mm -hmm. sang, singing or saying this psalm as we're entering the church, right? And it's trumpeting God's glorious reign to all the people. And then verse four through six retells the the um, so I get back to that. Um, it kind of retells the 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 wilderness, you know, leaving leaving Egypt and and wandering through the wilderness to the promised land. And we know from scripture that these stories are always handed down over time, and and this is a story that. It probably gets told the most. Mm. And then there's another section, uh, verses 7 through 10, that talks about um, on Mount Sinai where God made provisions for the people to live in the wilderness. Mm. And again, continuing that story about God leading them through, through the wilderness. And then the last section that we would have read through here would be the... Like they call it a climax here. Oops, sorry. <clears throat> Two to thirty-five, where it's a call for the kingdoms to hail God as the true ruler, and that God mm -hmm. reigns with righteousness and establishes His earthly throne in the Temple of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. So we we kind of hear about this processional, we're celebrating God's return and then we're wandering through the desert and we're coming to the climax where the church is now <clears throat> where god where the god is residing in, in jerusalem kind of a brief overview i'm not sure who's doing that but that was interesting so it wasn't me okay <laughs> So, so what did the text say to the people for whom it was written? I look back at the text again. Yeah, put the text up. Okay, here we go. I forgot the question. Oh. Is that Kathy? Oh, that's Barbara. That's Barbara. Okay. Okay. Oh, here's the question. Yeah, get, let me show it to you. So you forgot it too. I did. What did the text say to the people for whom it was written? Okay. It makes you think about what God did for the people of Israel, bringing, bringing them out and... Um, I think it's a hymn of praise, right? It's thanking God for for being there and for yeah arising. You know, He's arisen for the people, and and the suffering that people go through. Um, on you know through Jesus, He's arisen, and on behalf of the world, you know, for the poor, for the weak, um, for the lonely, um, you know, and um, and that the people that are you know. Yes, yeah, so it's definitely praising God. You know, it's that song of thanksgiving. Yeah. And it kind of retells. Go ahead. Praise the Lord who carries our burdens day after day. Mm hmm. Yeah, may his, may his enemies be scattered, may his foes flee before him. Yes. You know, so, uh, and may you blow them away like smoke as wax mm. melts before the fire. Yeah. 
Right. May the wicked perish before God. Right. So all it's those. Of God's power. Yep. Over his enemies. They're reminding the people of what God has done for them and has always been there for them. Yeah, it's that history. It's retelling that story right. of history. And then, and then in the end, saying that it's it's because God reigns and He's with us always. And going back to Jerusalem, that's His earthly um, throne, but He's really the God of all. So I I would imagine um, after the temple was destroyed the first time, right? That this mm -hmm. might have been very comforting for the people with hope that that God would restore the temple in Jerusalem and, mm -hmm. and reign there, mm -hmm. right? Because that's where God lived, you know, in their, in their minds, what they, what they understood, that God lived there. So this was also probably very comforting for those that lived after the first destruction of the temple. Anything else that this might be saying? the people then the father to the fatherless a defender of widows is god in his holy dwelling again dwelling in jerusalem mm -hmm. well it talks about god's goodness because and how he provided for them absolutely he leads out the prisoners with singing, but the rebellious live in a sun-scorched land, and sun-scorched land would be a place mm -hmm. where probably no water and, and nothing could grow. Yeah. No shade. <laughs> I'm sorry? No shade either. No shade, mm -hmm. yep. Yep. Can't live in that. Mm -hmm. yep. Absolutely. Yeah, part of the difficulty with a psalm like this is that it's a, a very long psalm, and uh, and so they cut out a lot of the verses from the uh, middle of it, and yeah. uh, uh, there's kind of a, a flow when you look at the whole psalm, uh, mm -hmm. and not just the portion that we use in worship, um, and it's a uh, it seems to be like a a, a processional psalm. Uh, one might say that you know it, we're it's like analogous to onward Christian soldiers, or mm -hmm. uh, we are marching in the light of mm -hmm. God. You know that kind of thing, where there's a, a movement going on here, um, and uh, and then the expectation is there um, in some of the verses uh, of. Uh, the, the universal recognition of the supremacy of the God of Israel over all the gods of the earth. Uh, uh, summon your power, God. Show us your strength, O God, as you have done before. Be because of your temple at Jerusalem, kings will bring you gifts. Rebuke the beast among the reeds, the herd of bulls among the calves of the nations. Uh, it goes on, scatter the nations who delight in war. Envoys will come from Egypt. Cush will submit herself to God. Sing to God, you kingdoms of the earth. Sing praise to the Lord. It's, a, it's such a universal um, uh, praise of God. And then it's only uh, at that point that says, sing to God, you kingdoms of the earth. Sing praise to the Lord. Uh, this is the part that we have. Uh, to him who rides across the highest heavens, the ancient heavens, who thunders with mighty voice. Proclaim the power of God, whose majesty is over Israel, whose power is in the heavens. You are awesome in your sanctuary. The God of Israel gives power and strength to his people. Very important part there that you're underlining. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Praise be to God. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I think in, in my version, and I'm um, using the Good News Bible, it calls it a national song of triumph. There you go. And I think that's important. It's of the whole nation. Right. Yep. A lot of psalms are individuals. This mm -hmm. one is more a, a corporate type. Yes. Yep. Yep. 
absolutely. Yeah, part of, <clears throat> part of the difficulty with the psalm is that unlike other portions of scripture, um, we don't have the advantage of being able to say clearly uh, the historical context of it. Mm -hmm. Um, in other words, when was this psalm uh, written? When was it used? Um, you know, what's the context? What were the people of Israel going through at the time uh, when this psalm was, uh, you know, uh, raised up to prominence in the worship of the people? Mm -hmm. um, the references here uh, seem to include um, or seem to relate to Babylonian uh, practices. So it gives the impression that maybe this psalm comes out of that period of uh, Babylonian exile, um, mm. which was later on in the history of Israel, uh, after they were conquered by the Babylonians and taken off into exile. And uh, and if if that's the context of the psalm, then looking at that, it would say, you know, the Babylonians. The Babylonians are in charge right now. Uh, the Babylonians are the powerful ones right now. But mm. we worship Yahweh, and Yahweh is God over all. And the time is coming when, um, and it is now, when uh, his supremacy is going to become real for everybody. Mm. So it's, it's really, you know, it's uh, uh, making Israel great again kind of thing. It reminds me a lot of the song that Miriam sang after they crossed over the water, the Red Sea, yeah. with Moses, and yeah. then Miriam burst into song. A lot of it reminds me of things like that. Yeah, yep. Yeah. With the tambourine and dance. Yeah, yeah. the dance, but it's like sing to, you know, it's singing to, sing to God, sing praises to his name, Yeah, you know. <clears throat> yeah, there's a verse in that portion that's left out, uh, verse 19. Praise be to the Lord, to God our Savior, who daily bears our burdens. Mm -hmm. Our God is a God who saves. Mm -hmm. From the sovereign Lord comes escape from death. Mm -hmm. And I like this one. Surely God will crush the, the heads of the, his enemies, the hairy crowns of those who go on in their sins. <laughs> I just think of my need for a haircut. <laughs> okay. So what do the text mean to the people for whom it was written? I think Pastor kind of touched on that just a moment ago. Hmm? So if they're in exile, if they're in mm -hmm. exile, what would this mean to them? That God will rise, rise up and will bring them victory. He yep. will overthrow. Would, would give me hope. Mm -hmm. Yep, definitely hope. Mm -hmm. In verse 9, it talks of the rain in abundance and to restore your heritage where it, la will la it languishes. I, I find that an interesting verse yeah. in the sense mm -hmm. that how important that is to our heritage. We're, we're part of all this. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I'm, I'm trying to, <laughs> <laughs> trying, trying to clear all the marks I made here. Uh, <laughs> all your little doodles. <laughs> okay, because they're showing up on the other slides. Yeah. Mm. Oh, oh, well, it's a little yeah. artwork. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. When you make the marks, you're not supposed to make them on the laptop. You're supposed to do it in the power <laughs> <game>. <laughs> <laughs> I thought uh, it was something on my screen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've never seen that. I thought it would disappear once I changed to the slide, but I guess not. <laughs> That's okay. It doesn't distract from the word. It's all right. Mm -hmm. There you go. There's your eraser. There you go. Now you got the eraser. <clears throat> There it is. Excellent. There you go. That, you know, that would be great to be able to use an eraser like this to kind of blot out all the bad things in your life, right? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. we have to need, need an awful lot of them. Absolutely. 
-hmm. Yeah, so so there's a lot of hope. There's, there's um, you know, we'll be back. Uh, we'll be great mm -hmm. again. God will rule. Uh, this too shall pass um, over time and, and, and we'll be back, you know, where we, where we belong. Mm -hmm. But it's also giving hope for the orphans and widows and the lonely, giving protection to them. It's not just like this triumphant nation. Don't forget the people who really need hope. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. So how did this text relate to our contemporary setting? Mm. You know, there, there, there's, we've got these political battles and you've got one party saying, let's make America great again. And the other party mm. doesn't agree. And, and, um, and I'm mm. sure there's people waiting for things to change. Um, if you know, I could put it a little contemporary here with a little politics. Um, there's always going to be somebody that's in, in want and there's always going to be somebody that is on kind of on top of things. And so, um, I would think the people who are, who are in need of justice, the ones that are, or have been abandoned by society, I guess, could look at a psalm like this and say, you know, God isn't going to forget me. Yeah. yeah. Mm. It was on the news last night um, that <laughs> in Corona, Queens, how um, <laughs> the communities there, they're saying that so many families are crammed into one house mm. that, oh. that um, if somebody gets sick, it's like impossible for them to quarantine them. And that, that's why it's like spreading so bad. And they were saying in Corona is mm. it, it, they're very, they're getting hit very, very hard. But that's mm. what they were saying. The people, they don't have money. They're poor. Um, mm. It's a Spanish community. Mm. And um, I, I was just thinking of that, that like, you know, they feel hopeless. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 You know, and then, you know, out here in Long Island, I know there's a lot of cases and it's kind of a hotbed, but or at least we can shelter in place in the comfort of a bigger home, bigger than a three home apartment. Mm -hmm. You know, and they um, said there was like three families living in one. Yeah. Right, one I, was on, <clears throat> oh, I was on another Bible study this morning with another church, and <clears throat> one of the ladies they? there happened. Yes, <clears throat> <clears throat> happens. Were yeah. you cheating? Were you cheating on us? Weren't you? <laughs> no, no it was at ten o'clock. Prospecting. I'm still here. I'm prospecting. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> but anyway, one of the ladies, um, have, she doesn't live in the town where her church is. She lives in central Iceland. But she mm -hmm. was saying that one person in all the central Iceland, Wyandanch, and Brentwood, I think it is, all of those households have been losing one member of the family mm -hmm. to this. Because those families, just like in Corona, Queens, those families live in small um, um, houses, but a lot of people, you know, a lot of generations yeah. living yeah. together. Multi-generational. Yeah. Multi-generations. Yeah. Right. And so she said that her town has been hit hard because, mm -hmm. you know, because of the living conditions. Yeah. Um, and she said, you know, unfortunately, one person in each family has been has died you know and the family just keeps um like reinfecting each other you know it's it's, well, it's very hard to to isolate exactly you know, people in in a, in a crowded home yeah. even in, in the especially in the apartments in the city i grew up in an apartment so i know how hard it would be to and it was large my apartment yeah. but it's very hard to isolate someone we we're looking at these homes where we could isolate someone Right. you know, at least part partially, but you know, they can't, it's very hard to isolate. Right. Yeah. And they can't afford to go someplace else. Yeah. Well, where else would they go? Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. That's you know, it too. I mean, where else would you go? Right. We're very fortunate, you know, in, in most of our homes at Hope, you know, that we're able to um, stay away from other people. 
mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and self quarantine and and. So, so this morning, Pastor and I were in another meeting, and the church in Manhattan, Trinity on the west side, they have a a shelter um, for young people with various things going on in their lives. They don't have a place to live, mm. but the shelter they're there twenty four seven now. Mm-hmm. Um, they have nowhere else to go, so they stay there with. There's a lot of people in a small space, so it's kind of the same thing. Right. Mm. They're being protected from having to live out in the street, but at the same time, they're they're kind of quarantining with a whole bunch of other people. Yeah. So, um, sounds like a tough setting, but what is, so what are mm. the challenges they face face at that shelter is that the city uh, does not want them. It, it says that they're not allowed to do that. So the city is trying to get them to uh, to not do that, which means well, that those folks that are living there are going to be in a very difficult situation. Yeah, where would they go if their families won't take them? Where are they, these people going to go? Mm-hmm. They'll be out on the street. On the street. Yeah. Yeah. So, so as I think about contemporary setting, you know, you know, usually the 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 minority, the poor, the ones that throughout history have been oppressed are the ones that have the strongest faith. So kind of what's going on today that something like this could, with a sound like this, could really give them a boost to get through this difficult situation. Um, definitely, as they're thinking about the promised land is when this virus goes away they can get out again anything else in this question so what can I apply or take away from this text for my life today I think it's what you were just saying you know, as a follower of Jesus, to maybe be able to speak out and help those who aren't able to speak out and help themselves and to be a warrior for, for God, you know, and, and to be helpful and to um, sing the praises of God and um, have faith and hope that you to provide you the ability to do. We can give a voice to the voiceless, as they say. Mm-hmm. All right, the that's a good that way to put it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The ones that can't or they're too afraid to speak up. Yeah. <clears throat> I think uh, one thing that uh, in the psalm itself, uh, verse 4, uh, sing to God, sing in praise of his name, extol him who rides on the clouds, rejoice before him. His name is the Lord. Mm-hmm. And that's the... Uh, that's the version of the name of God uh, from the mm-hmm. Old Testament, Yahweh, um, yeah. the mighty warrior, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a very specific name. Mm-hmm. And I think one of the things that I take away from it is the fact that it's important uh, when we talk about God to talk about uh, the Lord, the one who made himself known uh, in mm-hmm. Jesus and who dwells among us. Um, mm-hmm. We, we have something really powerful and, and important to share with other people. Mm. No, Pastor. Um, yeah. Pastor and it we, talks about, yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead, Patsy. Yeah, and it also talks about that there was, uh, that the earth shook and the heavens poured down the rain and, uh, uh, they are thankful that uh, God provided showers so they, you know, would uh, would uh, get uh, moisture and stuff, yeah. That, that was reminiscent back to Moses when Mount Moses went up Mount Sinai to speak mm. to God. God came down in that cloud. Oh. And the mountain trembled. Right. Mm. 
<clears throat> the other takeaway you take from this is that but i think rain especially in those in where this like, is in the the nation of israel and in the, that climate is yes. so refreshing it's so yeah. renewing yeah. to the earth yeah so right. it's such um a, a a powerful symbol to them that mm. rain would come it sounds That's like right. phil was yeah. trying to get in there phil yes uh, mm. it did look like it was registering um the, the other kind of takeaway is that ultimately that as bad as it all may seem, it's what we're, to, what we're talking about, ultimately uh, there'll be a silver lining, you know, to this <laughs> cloud, you know, to oh. your point, you'll get through it. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why if you go back to verse 19 that Pastor was talking about before, it says, blessed mm -hmm. be the Lord who daily bears us up. Mm -hmm. God daily is there for us. He never abandons us. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, I, and sometimes it's hard to think of that. And I'm sure people in, in dire circumstances now, it's very hard for them. But there's so many agencies out there and food banks and stuff that are helping. Yes. That's you just have right. to stay positive. Yeah. Yeah. Any other thoughts? Mm. Well, I think that's a, that's a good psalm. Uh, we will have mm. it on Sunday. And uh, we'll see how it's connected with the other lessons for this week. Keep in mind that the psalms uh, don't stand on their own. They're part of the overall flow oh. of worship. And so uh, as we look at the other two lessons uh, this week, uh, let's keep this one in mind so that we uh, can see if there are connections there yep. between those lessons and the song. So, so speaking yeah, of... Go ahead. Yeah, one, what is for Thursday again? First Peter? Yeah, First Peter chapter 4. Oh. Oh, no, That's it's next week. It's next week. <laughs> I moved a couple of these slides around. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Here we go. Chapter, four. chapter 4, verse 12 to 14. Right. Chapter 5, verses 6 to 11. Mm -hmm. So another opportunity to get together and to share. Um, yeah. You get a break from us um, today, and tomorrow um, we're going to have the hymn sing. Mm -hmm. So hopefully you can join us. Um, Joyce has got something lined up good for us. Yeah. It's all set. Just finished it before. Okay. Oh, great. <clears throat> We're back Thursday with First Peter and then Friday, John 17. And don't forget the agape uh, meal on Thursday evening at 630. <clears throat> we'll, have, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll have a chance to, uh, to pray, sing, and eat together. And then uh, we can just uh, update one another, talk with one another. There's uh, time for that as well. Uh, at the end of the service, so it, it's another it's another ancient practice that we're bringing back here. Uh, the agape meal, like the oh. early church, they got together in, in homes and they had a meal together. So, yeah. um, encourage other folks to to join us. Mm. Um, should be fun. I'm I'm either going to have stromboli as my meal or I'm going to have waffles. <laughs> 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 I'm at, not mm. having decided yet, but my picture of waffles here looks really, really good. Mm. So, um, but yeah, that, that would be great if you guys can join us. And um, now I know why Linda was asking for your address of your house. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, you know, I keep mentioning it, and it's probably being very cruel by doing that. And I haven't produced one yet for, for Linda, but I will. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I will. Uh, let's see. Updates. Um, uh, George Trixak is home from the hospital. Uh, oh, his uh, mm -hmm. reports we got was that uh, doing well. he's doing well. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, he's getting some at-home care, that kind of thing. But uh, he's doing much better than uh, when he went into the hospital. And that's, that's the object. That's the reason we go in in the first place. Right. Mm -hmm. That was a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, 
anything else. I don't, haven't heard anything yet about the PPP loan, so I can't really announce anything about that. Karen Slatis? Mm -hmm. uh, and Karen Slatis, I don't know, do you have any update on that, Vicar? No, I haven't. Um, I'm going to call Wally this afternoon. Yeah. Um, I've just been busy with a couple other things. I haven't had a chance. Yeah, we were, mm -hmm. we were expecting that you would be going home, right? Yeah, it, it sounded like it was imminent because things were, they weren't finding anything wrong, so. Yeah. Right. Okay. And I promise I will. I will get information on that. Okay. All right, um, folks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We'll 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 end in prayer, and we'll send mm -hmm. you off to the rest of your day, and mm -hmm. um, stay well, and um, call each other up, pick mm -hmm. up the folks that are feeling down and blue, mm -hmm. pulling this together. So. Okay, let us pray. O God of glory, your Son, Jesus Christ, suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and in joy, that all the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 Thanks. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. 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 Bye.